a ghost refuses to go into the afterlife because it wants to protect its loved ones. The man known as the storyteller was visiting the town of Rinder as he collected and crafted more and more stories to tell. He went to people's houses and offered entertainment in exchange for food, a drink and a place to stay. The people loved him for his stories and never hesitated to give him what he wants. Word about him spread like wildfire and soon everyone dreamed of a chance to meet the storyteller. The entertainer was no ordinary soul as the stories he crafted were not only true but also prophetic. He wouldn't tell them stories of his aunt Kindri but he would tell them about their granny Smith. He would tell them about the things they thought no one knew or tells them what was happening and what would happen with their family. This particular night, the storyteller went to the town of Rindir and had already gathered a crowd. The people could see the man himself, the dark skin, the golden turban, the detailed jacket and the glorious smile that brought joy to everyone he met. It was clear that the man was a naturally charismatic person that would charm his way around the town. He played games with the kids and walked leisurely into the town centre and settled down under the banyan tree. The town elders would hold their courts here and ensure the community is thriving and happy. This seat was given to none save the storyteller. As the people went en masse to the centre, the storyteller raised his soothsaying tool, the magic eight ball. It is said that only the truly divine could challenge the greatness of the ball of eight and tell people their fortunes. Shelya, exclaimed the storyteller, your mother had a journey to heaven that was filled with trials. An angelic lions attacked a group on the way to the pearly gates. Hercules jumped in to fight them off. Unfortunately, the Nemean lion was not one of them, so Hercules bade them farewell. Shelya, he continued, your nanny frowns upon you. Why, mysterious orb, does the grandmother feel anger towards her granddaughter? The storyteller shakes the ball and looks upon it for its divinity. You have insulted her legacy by making her famous oolong bread for a man you had sexual feelings for. Anya gasps and look at, looks at Danjur. The storyteller looks at the ball and gasps. Secret feelings? Uh, do not insult your ancestors, Anya. Nelfar is spat out. Allow me to tell you a story. Last year, your wife died of a disease that turns you yellow. It is sad. It is sad. However, her spirit journeyed to the gates of heaven but took a full turn at the end. The work of her spirit was not yet fulfilled. There is much work for her to do. You will be guided by her to ensure you have the utmost protection. Let me divine what protection you need from your wife. Nefa starts sweating. Oh, holy storyteller, I must talk to my wife on my own. The conversations between a man and a woman should be between them and not told for the whole town to hear. Nelfar, he shouted, this story has a happy spirit. The town should know of how much profound love that it serves as an example for years to... Oh my God, Nelfar! The sweater was shocked. Nelfar started bowing and praying for the earth to open up and swallow him whole. Nelfar, the protection your wife wants to give you is protection from Anya's sexual advances. It seems your wife's spirit holds great anger at your betrayal, which you told her about right before she died. She has sworn to protect you, your form from any relations at all. Saying thus, the storyteller left the town post haze before the rumors, the storyteller causing emotional turmoil in a town spreads around. He quickly pays his actors to talk of his greatness. Another job for the storyteller, another life ruined.